school. How are we supposed to be doing? Uh, so is it? Yeah. I got, I'll, I'll go. No, all bad, all bad. Have you spoken to him? Yeah, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Costa Rica. This is the Las Nubis Rainforest, a very diverse area with lots of plant species. Las Nubis has a lot of endemic species because of its location, because it also goes from a high elevation down to a lower elevation. Um, and one of the rivers that runs through it is called the Rio Pines Blancas, and it supplies um, a lot of fresh water running down from the uh, Talamanca mountain range. Wow. We're about 1,300 meters. Ready? Okay, as you know, this is Las Nubes Rainforest here. There's, at this end, you can see kind of a, a place which is degraded, where there's no trees. You see this at the edge, yeah. mm -hmm. the slope there? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's also part of Las Nubes. That used to be pasture land. And this is where the trail is uh, that goes up to about that first break, sort of the plateau there. And that's the area that we're going to work in in terms of reforestation. Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll get it. You'll get a, it's a good hike once we get down there. This is the quarry. <laughs> Finally, I'm doing something meaningful in my life. <laughs> Those are pretty hard. We're hauling trees. Come on, Howard. We're hauling uh, a variety of different trees. And we're doing. Plan to reclaim some uh, pasture land. Uh, this is, I guess, the entrance to Los Nunez. And this is Howard, our hero. <laughs> Howard. We're doing something. Now we're just we'll for the deeps of the jungle. I can't believe people would destroy this to grow some cattle. Las Nubis Rainforest right now, hiking to um, plant some trees along the trail. Uh, as you can see, it's a very beautiful scenery and extremely humid as well. I've had a friend the whole way so far. He's hanging on pretty well. No way! Yeah, I don't know what it is. That is crazy. He's been. I got Do you mind if I get a shot of that? No, go ahead. But he's been uh, rattling around there. I'm afraid it's gonna fall off. Yeah. Can you hold him super still? With my fingers. Thank you so much. I'm gonna move on. Yeah. You're so good. Good job. Stop cutting. Where did you get this? What are you doing? We're sequestering carbon <laughs> with uh, these trees. <laughs> and how will this sequester carbon? Uh, well, through photosynthesis. <laughs> Uh, the tree is going to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Might speak a little bit about werewolves. And as a, oh, werewolves? 
Well, werewolves are native to Costa Rica. Just the ecology. <laughs> the ecology of werewolves? Behavioral, yeah. <laughs> My first drink. Say it again. And that's how easy it is. To plant a tree. We're sweat brothers. Does anyone know what kind of trees these are? There are uh, various fruit trees for birds. Smile. Hello. Looking for trees to plant more. Dunk your head in. <laughs> Good. Never have such pure water in your life as this. Guys, what did you write? And that was our Lost Movies tree planting adventure. I just felt like, like you see like there's lots of green and brown and you walk through the forest and then all of a sudden you just see something totally amazing. Like you see like it's cool like bright red, like yeah, epiphyte or a little flower or yeah. that centipede that was just so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's something like you'd never see like anywhere else, you know? Yeah. It's so, so good. Hi, we're right now at the Kopi Agri model coffee farm. This is El Grano Tico. It is the model farm for sustainable shade grown coffee. And this is a coffee plant. Um, these are coffee cherries right here. And the red ones are ripe. And with shade grown coffee, in order to ensure quality coffee, only the red ones are picked. Whereas normal uh, sun grown coffee, the whole branch might be stripped in the beans of the process. But with shade grown, only the red is picked, so to ensure the high quality beans. And around this farm, these coffee plants are interspersed with trees, which obviously will provide the shade. I think it's a minimum of 30% shade is required to be considered shade-grown coffee. And these trees will provide, uh, you know, habitat for birds as well as fruits, and it will increase the overall biodiversity uh, in the region. So that's why uh, shade-grown coffee farms are much more like ecological sound than a sun. Farm. And they are pesticides are not used unless the, it is. Necessary. It's 